The following review contains significant plot spoilers. Please watch at your own risk. Hello all Bond fans, uh, three years ago I said I would review Never Say Never Again and the spoof version of Casino Royale and of course I never did, but uh, with Spectre coming up, uh, I'm back in the James Bond mood, I've been like marathoning all the movies and uh, I just recently rewatched this one, uh, but I recently also bought the Blu-ray is pretty cool but uh, I will be reviewing this finally uh, it's not going to be scripted unlike all my other reviews so this version of Casino Royale was released a few months before you only live twice in 1967 a uh, little backstory before we begin a producer by the name of Charles K Feldman obtained the rights to Casino Royale and tried to make a deal with the Eon producers, Harry Saltzman and Cubby Broccoli, to make a serious James Bond movie, but they couldn't come to terms, and basically Feldman decided to make a satire. And yeah, this is the mess we got. This is a spoof, kind of in the same vein as Austin Powers, although the Austin Powers movies did it way better and are much more entertaining. Okay, so now I'm just going to go over the entire plot. I kind of condensed it a little. I left out a lot of crap. But uh, basically, this is the entire plot. Uh, Sir James Bond, played by David Niven, is a retired spy and is visited by M to be convinced to come out of retirement uh, because Smirsh has been killing various agents. So the mansion is destroyed and M is somehow killed in the explosion, although you don't see it. <laughs> it's really, really bad. Uh, attempts are made on Bond's life, but he escapes. Bond is promoted head of MI6. All remaining agents are renamed James Bond 007 to confuse Smirsh. From there, it just kind of shifts a little bit to just a bunch of nonsense. Then we see Evelyn Tremble, played by Peter Sellers, who is recruited to beat Le Chief, played by Orson Welles, at Baccarat. This whole Baccarat scene is actually pretty faithful to the novel, minus the magic tricks done by Orson Welles. I think it's one of the most enjoyable scenes in the film. But anyways, Evelyn Tremble wins the game and is captured by Le Chief. But he escapes and is killed by Vesper Lind, played by Ursula Andress, who of course played the very first Bond girl in Doctor No. So from this point, the film shifts back to David Niven's Bond. Uh, his daughter, Mata Bond, played by Joanna Pettit, is kidnapped by a UFO and is brought to Casino Royale. Uh, Niven's Bond goes to Casino Royale and tries to rescue her. There he meets the evil mastermind of Smirsh, Dr. Noah, who turns out to be Jimmy Bond, uh, David Niven's Bond's nephew, who is played by Woody Allen. 
and his diabolical scheme is to use biological warfare to make all women beautiful and to kill all men over four feet six inches. And at this point, shit hits the fan. There's a huge battle at Casino Royale. There's cowboys and Indians just happening to like burst through the doors. Chaos ensues. There's explosions, and Casino Royale is blown up, and everybody dies. And I'm not even exaggerating. Literally everybody dies, and then the credits roll. So now I guess I'll try to follow the same format as my other reviews. I'm gonna go over like the characters and what I think of their portrayals. So first we have James Bond. Uh, he's played by David Niven, the original James Bond. Anyway, there's like probably ten, ten or more people in this movie credited as James Bond 007 due to the stupid plot. But David Niven is a good actor. I think that his portrayal as James Bond was pretty good. Considering what he was given the work with, he kind of reminds me of Roger Moore's Bond a little bit. But yeah, he did a pretty good job. Uh, I guess you would call the main villain Dr. Noah, played by Woody Allen. But uh, yeah, he only appears in like the last part of the movie, so you rarely ever see him. But uh, given the screen time that he had, it was pretty entertaining. I find that all of his scenes were actually some of the more enjoyable ones to watch even though they are really downright silly I just I don't know I just thought they were kinda of fun to watch all of the MI6 regulars are here uh, M Money, Penny, and Q M is played by John Huston and his character dies near the beginning when the mansion explodes like I said earlier so you don't really get to see much of him Money Penny is played by Barbara Boucher who is absolutely stunning in this film and uh, it's funny because her character is also renamed James Bond 007 and uh, we have Q played by Jeffrey Belden who you don't really see much of uh, there's like one Q branch scene and that's basically it and now I'm going to talk about what is probably one of the most strongest aspects of this film and that's the Bond girls um, there's lots and they're all very beautiful I would argue that this film has the most beautiful Bond girls out of every single James Bond film in the official and unofficial series you have Ursula Andress playing Vesper Lind uh, Dahlia Lavi playing the detainer Deborah Kerr playing Agent Mimi who despite being like 40 something years old still looked really good in this film uh, then you have Barbara Boucher playing Money Penny. She looks amazing. And personally, my favorite is uh, Matabond, played by Joanna Pettet, who looks probably the best, in my opinion. I don't know, I just find her really attractive. Music in the film was all composed by none other than Burt Bacharach. Uh, I think his score in this film is actually pretty good and memorable. I especially love the main Casino Royale theme. It plays throughout the movie, and whenever it comes up, it puts a smile on my face. It's just so goofy sounding. The plot and action scenes in this film are an absolute mess. And that's mainly due to like all the directors who took part in the film. Uh, here's just a list of all the directors. Ken Hughes, John Huston, Joseph McGrath, Robert Parrish, Val Guest, and one uncredited director, Richard Talmadge. Because of all this, the plot is actually pretty difficult to follow, and it wasn't until I went on the Wikipedia page that I realized every little plot point. The action scenes are few and far between and are also a mess. I have read somewhere that many of the actors who took part in this film thought that it would be a serious movie, and I guess uh, once they found out that it was a spoof, they got really agitated and some actually left production. I know for a fact Peter Sellers uh, left pretty early. And they had to fill some of his scenes in with like a cardboard cutout or something silly. It's really interesting. I recently purchased the uh, so-called collector's edition of Casino Royale on Blu-ray. And I definitely recommend getting it uh, if you're a huge James Bond fan, obviously, and you want the whole collection, even though it is an unofficial film in the series. 
But uh, there's some bonus stuff, and there's a behind-the-scenes making of the movie, and I would say that's more interesting than the entire film itself. Overall, the 1967 spoof version of Casino Royale is highly unremarkable. I would say it's borderline unwatchable. I had to watch this movie in two sittings because it was that bad and boring. My main problem with this film is that you can't enjoy it seriously or as a comedy. All of the comedic aspects and jokes in this film just aren't funny to me. And I'm pretty sure it's like that for a lot of people. At the end of the day, this is the worst out of the three unofficial Bond productions and easily the worst James Bond movie ever made. No matter how hard I try, I can't enjoy this movie at all, even with the few positives that I mentioned. If you want to sit back and enjoy a nice spoof of James Bond, I definitely recommend Austin Powers. I give Casino Royale 1967 a 2 out of 10. Now I'm just going to summarize my likes and dislikes, starting with my likes. The girls in this film are absolutely stunning and gorgeous and are probably the most prettiest out of every Bond movie. And lastly, the music is pretty good, especially the main theme song. And of course, now for my dislikes. I have many, but I'm just going to go over the major ones. So the first point, and probably the most important, it's just hard to watch. It's boring, chaotic, and the jokes aren't funny. The direction of this movie is just a plain mess. It's very hard to understand what's going on in the movie. And lastly, the movie is just too long at 2 hours and 11 minutes. It's really hard to sit through all this in one sitting. Well guys, I finally did it. I finally reviewed this crappy movie. And uh, stay tuned in the near future for Never Say Never Again. I'll probably get around to that within a month or two. But we'll see. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.